Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri is not an inspirational film about how a single mother changes the hearts and minds of her small town through her bold and fearless actions. It is not a story about people coming together in a time of tragedy to seek consolement and healing. It is not about justice. This is a quirky revenge exploitation movie presented like it's a thought-provoking drama. Moreover, it's just the first two-thirds of a revenge exploitation movie dragged out with understylized pacing and music. It's naturalistic, atmospheric approach clashing with its attempts at dark humor and wit. The performances in writing are oddly inconsistent, not certain if the movie should be a twisted dark comedy or a tragic drama, playing it both ways in the same scenes, sporadically causing inappropriate laughs during the awkward transitions. Stereotypes about police officers are assumed, not shown, while the main protagonist actually is seen doing horrible things. And there are long stretches where the viewer is asked to sulk in anger, vileness, and crassness. What do we get for it? An over-explained message and no Payoff. I left the theater frustrated. Though, I'll try to meet this movie halfway. After all, it did have the proper punctuation in the opening title. This review will contain spoilers for Acts 1 and 2. A timestamp for my star rating and pros cons chart, along with a positive section, is in the description. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, takes place in the present day small town of, well, you know. After months without a single arrest in the case of her murdered daughter, Mildred Hayes, a determined single mother, is fed up with the Epping Police Department and rents out three billboards with a scathing message toward police chief William Willoughby. Tensions rise as the chief's good character is called into question, dividing the town's citizens who sympathize with Mildred but not her methods. Most offended is Officer Dixon, who admires Chief Willoughby as a father figure, though Dixon himself is simple, prejudiced, and prone to violence. Despite the mounting anger, Mildred refuses to take the billboards down until just Justice is served. Will the police department come around or will everything explode? I'll start off by recommending that you watch or read other reviews for Three Billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri before deciding whether or not to see it for yourself because my opinion is in the minority. Many really like it and it's nominated for Best Picture. If you are familiar with and enjoy Martin McDonough's previous films, In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths, then you might love this movie. I've heard good things about In Bruges, but I thought Seven Psychopaths was a dragged out mixed bag. Though, I will never forget that one playful scene around the campfire. Fun stuff. I did not enjoy Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. After misremembering the showtime for Call Me By Your Name, I had decided to see either Winchester or the 1517 of Paris, both of which had mixed reviews. Then, my heart skipped a beat. There was a showing of three billboards around the same time. A delightful surprise. I'll get to see an Oscar-worthy film after all. I entered the theater excited, and I left it kind of angry. I'll admit, my intense reaction had more to do with my expectations. Having not watched the previews for the movie, do not watch them by the way, they spoil everything. Having not watched the previews, all of the word of mouth that I'd heard painted a picture of an inspirational film. A single mother sticking it to a corrupt small town police department to achieve justice for her deceased daughter. I figured there would be some shades of gray, elements of deep drama, and uplifting, justifiably rebellious comic relief. I did not expect that the mother Mildred Hayes would be the most unlikable character in the film. Frances McDormand does a fantastic job of portraying Mildred as a broken, fuming, impatient, and unwavering woman. But her attitudes and actions go too far. It is a delicate line to walk between deserved anger with determination and mean-spirited blind rage. And Mildred crossed that line for me. She's immature, prone to verbally lashing out in obscenities at even well-meaning individuals. There's a rage and tension beneath her surface, liable to burst at any moment. And it does. Mildred's imposing posture, venomous cursing, and intimidating stares give way to instances of assault and violence without consequence. A 
big problem for me with three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri is that it never provides sufficient context for Mildred's behavior to feel appropriate. The movie only ever tells us through secondhand accusations that the police officers are corrupt and racist, alleging that Officer Dixon beats black citizens and that the department covers it up. But the audience is never shown a single scene of this happening. The majority of the deplorable horrible actions we actually see are performed by Mildred herself. Whether or not you are convinced to hate these cops will depend entirely on the personal baggage you bring into the movie, not on what the film presents. Oh, she says the police are racist black beaters. That's my perception, so I believe her. Equally valid are those who have had nothing but good experiences with law enforcement and have a hard time believing they'd act this way. The one time Officer Dixon does display horrible behavior, he is a immediately reprimanded. Besides that, we do hear an officer or two use the N-word and espouse old-fashioned notions, but the reality presented in the film itself is that most of the police officers have come to terms with the fact that the times have changed and they are all kept in check by Chief Willoughby. In fact, Chief Willoughby, played by Woody Harrelson, turns out to be the most endearing character in the film. He is a loving family man with a healthy relationship with his wife and two daughters. He's ashamed of the attitudes and actions of some of his officers, but he sees potential in them, nurturing their positive traits. The chief cares about everyone in the town, regardless of sexual orientation or color. I was immediately won over by his honesty when he tells Mildred that if he got rid of every racist cop, then he'd only have three left, and they'd hate the fags. Okay, while some will interpret this as a confession of guilt or reinforcing horrible stereotypes about cops, I thought Chief Willoughby was maturely acknowledging that everyone has some sort of prejudice, but that he was willing to see past that and teach them how to be respectful law enforcers. I did not get the impression that Chief Willoughby didn't have his department under control, and the movie never provided evidence to the contrary, beyond hearsay. I do recall Officer Dixon arrests someone close to Mildred, primarily motivated by the current billboard scandal, but he does claim that he found weed on said person. Dixon's biased motivation is clear, though he might have actually been enforcing the law, even if you don't agree with drug laws, which is a different topic entirely. Once again, no proof is shown to the viewer either way. This lack of context, objectivity, and dramatic irony all makes it very hard to firmly relate to Mildred's point of view. What has she seen to the contrary? The main target of Mildred's three billboards is Chief Willoughby, which upsets the small town who love and respect him. And I sympathize much more with them than Mildred. That seems inexcusable. Mildred's daughter was raped and murdered, yet seeing her take her anger out on good, though complacent, people hurts my ability to sympathize with her. In her rage, she has some disturbing things to say about culpability, suggesting that if someone is part of a group or gang and another member of that group commits a crime, then the other innocent members of the group should also be treated as responsible. I would agree only if it can be proven that the other members knew and allowed the crime to happen. But it seems like Mildred is implying that everyone in the group is guilty whether or not they knew about the crime. She tells all of this to a priest who came by her house out of concern for her well-being. Moreover, scathing said priest by stating, since other priests were effing altar boys, that makes him guilty by association. This is dangerous mob mentality thinking. Disposing of individual justice. Harper Lee's novel, To Kill a Mockingbird, left an impression on me in high school for the beautiful way it shone a light on this bad, destructive line of thinking. Additionally, Mildred proposes all babies should have their blood and DNA entered into a national database that could be swept for matches in instances of unsolvable murder and rape cases. This thought is more understandable, relatable, and debatable given what she's been through. And Chief Willoughby proves to be the voice of reason, defending everyone's right to privacy. Once again, the Chief comes off as legitimately invested in Mildred's case and peace of mind. But he tells her, frankly, there is nothing legally left that can be done. The 
trail is cold. Chief Willoughby is entirely upfront with her and sensible. He is not creating conflict for Mildred or standing in her way. All Mildred has to go on are her suspicions, prejudices, and feelings. In a way, she comes off as one of the most bigoted characters in the movie. Not in the traditional sense against minorities, homosexuals, or women, but against cops and authority figures, despite the audience having no proof to back her up. The film never even hints that her daughter's case is being swept under the rug or suppressed. And if it did, my apologies, but I missed it. Without the proper context, this all makes Mildred come off as irrational. On the one hand, Mildred is helpless. There is nothing that can bring her closure. On the other hand, she is hurting other people. Sometimes, literally. After having a soda chunked on her windshield, she kicks a teenage boy and girl in their genitals in front of her son's high school. And it is presented as humorous, justifiable vigilantism, which is completely at odds with the movie's realistic style and tone. Moreover, she receives no consequences for the results of her assault on a high school campus, further enabling her nihilistic fury. While having a chat with a conspicuously CGI deer, Mildred doubts that there is a point to life and existence before cracking a joke about Doritos. I question her sanity. Furthermore, Mildred still has a son, Robbie, whom she completely ignores. Robbie tries to relate the pressure he's under at school from all the students who hate his mother's billboards. Another conflict we don't actually get to see, and Mildred offers him no comfort. There is no bonding over their shared loss and finding the strength to move on together. Mildred's own son and his hardships are presented as merely another point of opposition to Mildred's own goal. How selfish. During a morning breakfast, she notices that Robbie is still upset with her and her neglect, and she proceeds not to comfort him, but instead to catapult her Rice Krispies into his face like she's a toddler. Ah, you say. Is the movie just presenting a self-destructive form of grief? I would have thought so. But then there's a flashback of Mildred shouting and cursing at her daughter and son even before the daughter was murdered, giving the impression that Mildred was not a good mother beforehand. And the movie never shows anything to contradict this either. In one of the most inappropriate laughs I had in the film, Mildred yells at her daughter, I hope you get raped. What an on-the-nose, disgusting coincidence to try to make me feel bad for Mildred. There is a lot of weird writing and delivery in this movie that, when coupled with my dislike for Mildred, led me to believe that Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri was supposed to be a dark, comedic revenge film. Exploitation cinema in the vein of I Spit on Your Grave or Kill Bill, except I Spit on Your Grave has a third act, and Kill Bill is self-aware and stylized. Three Billboards has the natural, slower pacing of films such as No Country for Old Men or Phantom Thread, but Three Billboards has dialogue and attempts at humor more at home in amusing B-movies. It just does not click with me. For example, Chief Willoughby, after learning about Mildred's billboards, states gravely something to the effect of, we're about to have a war. In another scene, Mildred is purchasing the billboards from Red Welby, no relation to Chief Willoughby, and Red asks her, aren't you Angela Hayes' mother? Mildred then proclaims coolly, yeah. I'm Angela Hayes' mother. I half expected an abrupt cut to one of Quentin Tarantino's chapter title cards. Instead, the cheesy, fun delivery is left to hang there seriously. A tense scene when Mildred's abusive ex-husband Charlie shows up and Robbie leaps to his mother's defense with a knife is interrupted with cutesy, did I come in a bad time, type humor. Then, Charlie calms down and has a touching cry with Mildred over their daughter Angela's death. What? First off, ditch the humor. This is a domestic abuse scene. Secondly, if you're going to have Charlie and Mildred have a bonding scene over their shared loss, have it later in the film. He just choke slammed her into a wall. Any normal person would demand that Charlie leave the premises immediately, not sit and have a heart to heart. This segment would be much more natural toward the end of the movie if Charlie returned to Mildred remorseful. But this, this is what I'm talking about when I bring up the weird writing and scene transitioning, which made me inappropriately laugh in befuddlement. There's also a hospital scene later on that had the potential to be one of the most touching and humane sequences in the movie. <laughs> Yet my audience laughed at the coincidence that set it up, which 
halfway broke the mood. Additionally, there are multiple voiceover montages during which the speaker is reading the lines plain, matter-of-factly, without emotion, yet the images on screen are trying to communicate tragedy and heartache, which causes emotional dissonance. As well, there are serious scenes with unaware phrasing. I felt really bad that I laughed when Peter Dinklage's character casually states, I have to go to the little boy's room. My apologies to a great actor. At that point, I wasn't sure when the drama or humor was meant to be intentional anymore. Three Billboards is a simple, elongated story without the subtlety to justify it. At one point, I was on the movie side, realizing that all of this may be brilliant because it's intentional. It's subverting my expectations about an inspirational movie, creating shades of gray to the characters, making the supposed antagonist relatable and the protagonist questionable. Mildred's anger and grief is causing others to get angry, which causes more pain. Caught up in this is Officer Dixon, played by Sam Rockwell, who has a demanding and racist mother and no father figure besides Chief Willoughby. Dixon is an interesting, conflicted character with whom I also sympathize with more than Mildred. Though he's accused of beating black people, this is never shown. Perhaps it was even a single incident that still haunts him, for all I know. The only violent actions he takes in the movie are in the heat of passion, not premeditated, or in the pursuit of truth. He was a flawed, though understandable character, and it was surprising that the filmmakers gave a prejudiced man depth. I'm not sure what the complaints are about his character, besides the lack of consequences he receives, but that goes for Mildred too. I appreciated Dixon's subplot and Rockwell's performance. In a way, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri is secretly Officer Dixon's movie because he has the most character development out of anyone. In contrast, Mildred's character growth seems very minor and unresolved, even though she has more screen time. The idea of these characters caught in a vicious cycle of violence and prejudice, which constantly incites more violence and prejudice is mature stuff and a good message. Then, Charlie explains the whole point of the movie to Mildred. Anger begets anger. I was robbed of the film's one great subtlety. This line was even included in the trailer. It's not that I have a problem with movies stating their themes or ideas directly. Specifically, I was upset because I sat through so much anger, vitriol, mean-spiritedness, and stretched out sulking that felt cold and empty to me. And I had finally conceived of its purpose. The movie wanted me to discover this important aspect for myself all along. That was the reason I had to sit through all of this, to feel the consequences of the cycle of anger. No. Nope, they're just going to tell me what their movie is about. For bad comparison, Imagine you studied all night for an important test in a subject matter you find boring. The next day at school, you spend an hour on the test in frustrated silence, deliberating answers, reading carefully, and writing short essays. And at the end of the exam paper, the professor wrote, If you read this, draw a smiley face on the first page, and you'll get an A. No. This completely devalues how much attention and study work you put into understanding something you weren't enjoying. Everyone gets an A without having to figure out the material. I wasn't enjoying Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, but I put in the time to understand and appreciate what it wanted to say. Then it tells me exactly what it wanted to say. To be clear, not a problem in general, except for the fact that I liked very little else besides the subtle message. And then the movie blew that for me too. It's so heavy and slow that the humor just misses for me. The material may have been better served cut down from 115 minutes to 90 minutes, making the humor snappier and providing an unstoppable avalanche of angry momentum. Win the audience over with quick wit that hides the underlying tension and pain, taut, nervous levity. Then let the pain come to the surface and breathe at just the right time. Allow the audience to realize that the scenes that they were laughing at and enjoying were actually part of the problem all along. Maybe that's what the filmmakers wanted, but the editing didn't work for me. I would have lost my mind if there was one more scene of a character looking off in the distance to a mopey guitar solo. It is relentlessly pessimistic. Hey, 
You mentioned Peter Dinklage. Yes. He plays James, one of the only other good people in this movie. James has one scene at the beginning, is dropped for the second act, and then comes back to play in the third act. He probably should have had more of a presence throughout, considering his good payoff. Don't expect to see him much. Also really good is Caleb Landry Jones as Red Welby, a lackadaisical advertising man, and the one character who's positively inspired by Mildred. What about Angela's case? Is there a crime mystery? Only at a very minimal level. There is little progression in this plotline. The movie is mostly about people being proudly upset at one another instead of getting things done. Familiar and realistic, I guess. But who wants to sit through that? I wish there was more of a focus on what the citizens of the small town think, showing the billboards inspiring positive changes for the locals. Instead, all the billboards seem to do is so hate. Finally, we come to the ending. I'll be vague, but you may want to skip to the positive section or the star rating in five, four, three, two, one. Recognizing the significance of the imagery and the swelling music, I thought to myself, you better not end on this shot. To its credit, it did not. Unfortunately, it has only one more scene, which basically only exists to explain to the audience why they wanted to end on that shot. And that they're doing the ambiguous ending. Show it do show it do show it do What's the point? If you were going for ambiguous, ended on the appropriate, meaningful shot. Don't tease me like the movie has more story to tell, only to over-explain your non-ending. I wasn't going to enjoy it either way. But then you put this insert to try to clarify yourself. I guess test audiences did didn't get it. But I'd be interested to find out how helpful that one extra scene was at getting people to appreciate this ending. Most especially because there is no ending. Make one up for yourself. Have a debate about it or whatever. It comes off like an after school special. Will the cycle of anger continue? You decide in your everyday life. I call BS. Give me a conclusion to this story I just sat through. Ironically, this movie is perpetuating the cycle of anger by making me so frustrated. Once more, let me clarify. I don't generally have a problem with ambiguous endings or unconcluded plots in movies, as long as I felt that the journey the characters went on was worthwhile. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri had no moment of emotional catharsis or major reflective realization for the main character. It's not just that the plot has no ending, Mildred's character has no ending. She shows the slightest sign of maturity, but then proceeds to swing back back hard in the opposite direction. The film puts some doubt in your head based on a small gesture, but then ends with an aggressive shrug. Audience, you decide if Mildred has grown as a character. Well, considering she hasn't had to deal with any real consequences for her horrible behavior, I'm not convinced. If anything, the movie ends as Mildred is just beginning to learn anything. Whew. Okay, uh, positives. Three Billboards has great, though inconsistent acting. Very good staging, particularly an impressive one-shot sequence with well-timed stunt work. There's a strong female lead and positive minority characters, though I think celebrating what should be the norm to prop up average or subpar movies borders on condescension. Anyway, I liked the symbolism of a peaceful opening, lamenting the deteriorated remnants of the 1950s and providing a calm before the storm. The movie can be quite funny in places and has little touches of humanity and kindness that stand out more so because they are reprieves in a sea of hostility. And there are shades of gray to usually stereotypical characters, presenting potentially redemptive aspects to even some of the more prejudiced characters. There are a few interesting twists and turns, and the film has a good, though overstated, message about the vicious cycle of anger and prejudice. There is worthwhile content, and there are ideas within Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which allow me to understand why others would love and praise it. But I personally found it exhaustingly uneven, tonally wonky, genre non-committal, at times laughably awkward, unnecessarily stretched out, lacking in justifiable context, and relentlessly downbeat. And the upbeat moments are propping up Mildred's pathetic, condescending, mean-spirited, and aggressive behavior, treating it like a joke without consequence. It's a quirky B-movie, exploitation cinema, that has an identity crisis and delusions of grandeur. And in the end, the audience is left frustrated with no closure, just like Mildred herself. All of this was intentional, I'm sure, which causes this movie to come off as the best misanthropic picture 
of the year. I give three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri a one and a half out of five stars. My ratings are based on my level of enjoyment or appreciation of the film. And it left me angry, putting it below two stars, which indicates a mere dislike. But the film has enough value to rate above a one star, which I reserve for broken movies, such as The Circle. And hopefully I'll never have to review what I think is a half or a zero star film. I'm reading this review with all the passion and anger that I felt at the time that I watched this movie. But in all honesty, I've calmed down a lot. Maybe I got it completely wrong just because of my expectations. After all, it's nominated for Best Picture and critics love it. Once more, I encourage anyone listening to this to read or listen to other reviews before deciding whether or not to see the movie. And despite my harsh opinion, I hope you enjoy Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, if you end up seeing it. She's very immature, and that's coming from me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and they hate the fags. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. You got so heavy, baby. Yeah, yeah. That's too mild. You're not going to use that one. <laughs>